What's up, everybody? It's your boy Who Jogging Now. I know I've been gone for a few weeks. Uh, you know, as y'all know, it's for a trade. I'm a salesman, so things been getting a little busy. Went on vacation in Virginia, so now I'm back. And um, I had to put a video out for the Ball family. They got to represent, man. I, been, I got called out by Ball Facts and uh, DKM a few weeks ago, man. So shout out to them boys. So here I am, man. I'm coming back talking about a subject that, you know, I, I want y'all to know, man. It's not a fanboy channel. This is the channel. When I feel passionate about it, I speak on it. So this is a, a new development I've seen, um, as y'all saw on the on ESPN last week. Uh, Mike Schmidt, you know, who is a very respected NBA scout, uh, he gave his opinion about LaMelo. And as well as the whole uh, 2020 draft class that's coming in, but you know how it goes. LaMelo is going to be the most prominent person in that draft. You know, there's, there's no two ways about it. And so... What you saw um, it was, you know, you see the little, you see the tea leaves being read right now. You see a lot of the media pundits, especially Scott Van Pelt, they're kind of doing a 180 right now because they saw how ridiculous their first assessment was about LaMelo just because they don't like who we all know, the father of LaVar, man. And it's just funny, you know, how they all on this backpedal tour right now. Uh, because, I mean, at this point, man, you, you're just a stone idiot if you don't know that LaMelo is going to be a top three pick. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's, just, it's only so much stubborn that exists in this world before you understand what's really real. And what's really real is the kid is a real deal, man. And so it's cool to see these little segments now. And, um, you know, I'm going to give props what props do. I'm not going to sit here and castigate them every time unless they talk, start talking about some bull job again. And then we'll go back into that. But, you know, I really want to just highlight, you know, a few of the key things they were talking about. Because make no mistake, man, LaMelo Ball is going to be, he going to be that dude, man. He going to be that dude. So, and, you know, an interesting way that Mike Schmidt um, described the draft was, like, loaded, but the least scouted. So, there's going to be a lot of prospects coming through here, man. A lot of teams going to be happy about who they select. You know, we're talking, like, from 1 to 30, man. A lot of international prospects. A lot of domestic young prospects, like, uh, like my boy DKM. Boy, he loved uh, Yankee Okongo. That's his boy. So, uh, just like guys like that, hard workers who are going to be steady guys. Plenty of those in this draft if you don't get your hands on the big three, which we know is Anthony Edwards, LaMelo Ball, and, uh, and Wiseman. So so I, I agree with his assessment on that, man. You you, you kind of – first world problems if you don't get the overall number one pick. I mean, there's still plenty of great uh, talented guys to have. And I say within, even within that top ten, man, you still can walk away with a franchise-changing guy. Um but, you know, it's funny, man, that they roll into that same thing they always say. You know, Mike was, you know, stating about how when he first went to uh, to Lithuania and the BBB experience and LaMelo Ball was just a joke to him and all this. And be that as it may, you can say it's a circus, you can say all that, but if you sat there and watched that kid play, being 16 years old, coming straight out of Chino Hills, you can see he could play. Um, what it tells me is he may not have the best understanding of how the overseas transition is. Um, again, I'm a guy, I played overseas ball for two seasons, man. It's tough, man. Like, for you to unlearn the American game or at least take a back seat to the European style, it's, it's going to take time. And I went over there at 24. I can only imagine being 16 going over there because, I mean, all those dudes are big. I mean, the Melo Ball six foot seven, about 180 pounds right now. At that time, he was probably about, what, 6'1"? He's a, little, he's a little dude. So you got to understand that it's going to take time for him to get a, a hold of that uh, that speed, of that pace, of the strength level. And as you see his older brother, uh, Leangelo, he uh, he matured a lot better, though. You know, at this point, we know who the better player was. You, you can see that, at uh, you know. I mean, even from the, <laughs> the evaluations, you know, Leangelo being a three-star guy, LaMelo being a five-star guy. So you already knew who the better player was. But at that moment, you know, Leangelo at 18 with a stronger man body fared a little well, well, more well, let me say that, uh, in that LKL league than LaMelo. But if you know how to project, you can see what it does. And so as we know, he went to Spire and did his thing after that. But it's just funny how how um, these guys who are so respected in this media front, how they just don't have an ability to really project like that. Uh, it's all about numbers it's all about what have you done for me lately instead of understanding how that skill set can translate to that next level and you would think you would think for the designation of being an nba scout that you have that ability but it's funny how how generic some of these guys get with some of their evaluations and then guys like scott van pelt just run with him like gospel which means he ain't researched shit on his own 
which ain't surprising. I mean, it's only so much you could cover, so I'm not going to, you know, give them too much shit about that. But to spew your, your words out like it's gospel and you don't even done the research yourself, that's scary, man. <laughs> that's scary. That's real scary, dude. So, um, also, with some of the, the media pundits I've seen and some of the concerns that LaMelo has, I mean, everybody knows about his upside. 6'7 with a 6'10 wingspan. Can run the floor like a gazelle. Moderately athletic. Um, very much a high IQ player. A guy who wants to get his teammates involved first. You know, something that a lot of people, would that was one of his concerns, which we'll get to, that he's kind of erased that. So, um, what you see is they were kind of speaking about it. And I think that's, you know, one thing, about being an evaluator, you got to be fair. And so one of the concerns was him, and they said the same thing about James Wiseman, so it wasn't just LaMelo Ball, but they were saying him playing a short season, that that's going to, all that downtime could lead into having rust, having memory, uh, muscle memory issues, and, you know, just basically it might take a while to get back into playing shape. So there are concerns on that front, which I think that's a valid concern. I mean, you know, LaMelo only played 12 games. So... That is a big reason for concern to think, okay, so how does that work, you know, moving forward? Is, is he ready? So I, I don't have any qualms with that. Also, his shot selection is coming to um, question. Um, most noticeably, his three-point percentage is pretty low. But I, one thing I would see is, you know, well, I would say rather, is he has NBA range already, like deep NBA range. So the right coach, the right uh, philosophy, that can rein that in, so. Because there's guys like Markel Fultz who just couldn't shoot an NBA three, man. It took him like a year and a half. If you remember, man, his shot was just broke. And so he's finally gotten it back. But for a number one pick, you would expect a lot more than, from, uh, than what he's shown. But it just shows you, man, like it, it's real in the field, man. Like Diddy said back in 97, <laughs> it's real in the field, man. It, these ain't, you know, I know a lot of people like to say somebody trash or somebody ain't good as this person. But, man, you just don't know, man. It is it's real out there, man. They're grown men, the best of the best out there. And LaMelo got to prove himself, man. And so that's just the long and short of it. And, you know, and I got to end it with this. You know, with the corny shit you hear about, oh, well, you know, what comes with him, the circus and the father and all that. I'm like, tell me more about what LaVar has affected with the New Orleans Pelicans this year. Absolutely nothing. Uh, and if you know, if you learn LaVar's style by now, he says stuff all the time. It is the media who decides to highlight what they want to highlight. Like, he, he's never changed. He's never not been the way he is. You ask him a question, you're going to get a direct answer, whether you like it or not. And you can even compare it. I know a lot of brothers ain't going to try to hear this, but like with Donald Trump. You ask Trump, he's going to give you his opinion, you take it or leave it. And so, am I a Donald Trump fan? No, I'm not. But I can respect, you know, there's just what he about. Like, I said it, I meant it, and that's it. And that's how LeVar is, man. You go ask him a question, he's not going to pussy around it. He's going to answer your question the way he sees it. Now, do I always agree with that? No, I don't. But... I agree with the way LeVar carried himself, man. Like, so I don't understand how this is a new problem. Like, um, Lonzo's developing just fine. It takes time for a player to develop. The media hyped him up. Well, no, no, no. LeVar hyped him up too to be like the, you know, an instant go, just add water type player and an instant playoff. So it didn't pop off like that, like as we know. But some people were even like saying that, you know, Lonzo can even be a bum. I'm just like, y'all, y'all, y'all tripping, man. But so with that being said, man, Lonzo's just doing fine. He's not a distraction to his team. So that's just old bullshit 2017, 2018 rhetoric to say that LaVar is going to affect the outcome of his kid now. Because everything, let's keep it a beam, man. Everything he's done so far has kept his son out of trouble. It's kept him in the forefront and at the vanguard of the NBA talent. Um, again, the guys were saying he hasn't played. And another, well, another critique I heard was he hasn't played for a winning program. And I just think that's bullshit. Um, were the Illawarra Illaw, uh, I'm sorry, Illawarra Hawks were they a premier team in the uh, in the Australian league? Absolutely not. They, they were terrible. Um, but you can attribute that to you know some of the key guys like Aaron Brooks going down and what have you, and Josh Boone being a little washed up. You know the former NBA big man Josh Boone from Connecticut. Um, so uh, you know you can say that, but in the Drew League, <laughs> he has on a winning team. Uh, Chino Hills winning team, Spire Institute winning team, and um. For the junior league he played for in the LKL in Lithuania, he was on a winning team. So I don't understand where that critique comes from, but it's just, you know, what I always try to challenge y'all brothers is to be astute past narrative, man, because narrative can control everything, man. Like, literally, it has no factual base behind it, but if the right person says it, everybody takes this gospel, man. So don't be a slave to narrative, man. Keep your head in the swivel. 
And uh, I'm looking forward to see where he, he uh, develops from here. Um, it's just good to see again that some of the media pundits are starting to understand that a lot of that bullshit they were talking about is not applicable, and he's going to be a great player whether they like it or not. <laughs> whether they like his father or not, brothers. LaMelo Ball is going to be a name you're going to be saying for the next 10, 15 years. Lonzo Ball is a name you're going to be saying next 10, 15 years. Jello, perhaps. We'll see. But that's all I want to speak about on that, brothers. Man, y'all have a good day, man. Peace.